Welcome to Lesson 2-5, Verifying Segment Relationships. First we look at Theorem 2.1. Congruence of segments is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Those are very important parts of what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the year. Here we need to justify each step in the proof. We actually need to write the proof. Points P, Q, R, and S are collinear. We need to prove that P, Q is equal to P, S minus Q, S. We need to prove that P, Q, this segment here, is equal to the distance of this segment, P, S, minus the distance of the segment, Q, S. Segment R, or point R, plays no bearing on what we're going to do today. The first statement we're going to make is this. The points P, Q, R, S are collinear. And the reason for that is that is given. The second statement that we're going to make is that PS, the measure of segment PS is equal to the measure of segment PQ plus the measure of segment QS. And that is given by the segment addition postulate. Next we can state that PS minus QS is equal to PQ. And that is because of the subtraction property of equality. Finally, we can state that PQ is equal to PS minus QS and that is because of the reflexive property of equality. Now one thing a lot of students want to do is stop here at 3 and say that we're done because we have proved that PQ is equal to PS minus QS. This is not the statement that we need to prove we need to use the reflexive property which allows us to put, switch the sides of an equation without changing the equation's value or the meaning of the equation. We were asked to prove that PQ is equal to PS minus QS. That's up here. And our final statement needs to be in the exact form of what we're given to prove. In this example we need to write a two column proof given that segment AC is congruent to segment DF and segment AB is congruent to segment DE we need to prove that segment BC is congruent to segment EF so information that we're given is that this big segment here AC is congruent to this big segment here DF also we're told that this smaller segment AB is congruent to this smaller segment DE and we need to prove that BC is congruent to EF. As with any proof, our first statement is going to be about the given. Segment AC is congruent to segment DF and that segment AB is congruent to segment DE. And again, the reason for that, that is our given information. Next we're going to state that the measure of AC is equal to the measure of DF and the measure of AB is equal to the measure of DE and that is by the definition of congruence.
Next, we'll state that AB plus BC is equal to AC and DE plus EF is equal to DF. And we can say that because of the addition, segment addition postulate. Next we're going to use substitution. And what we're going to substitute, we're going to substitute A plus B or AB plus BC in for DF. The reason we can do that is because AC is equal to DF. Next we're going to use substitution. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute AC from this statement, AB plus BC is equal to AC, and we're going to substitute AC in for DF, so that we end up with DE plus EF is equal to AC. And that's because of the substitution property of equality. From there, we're going to use substitution again, and we're going to state that DE plus EF is equal to AB plus BC. And that is substituting this AC with what it is equal to from statement 3, AB plus BC. And again, that's because of the substitution property of equality. Step 6 is, step six is going to be another substitution we're going to substitute AB in for DE over here because in statement number two we said that AB is equal to DE so we have AB plus EF is equal to AB plus BC and again that's because of the substitution property of equality And finally, we're going to have EF is equal to BC, and that's because of the subtraction property of equality. We have to make one more statement here, and that statement is that BC is equal to EF and that's because that is the statement we were asked to prove and that's because of the reflexive property of equality taking a look at this proof in whole you can see that it's eight steps long Taking a look at this proof in whole, we can see that it's eight steps long, and we've used the substitution property quite a few times to get where we needed to go. Here's your homework for this evening. Have a good night.